We all want to be healthy. When we're not, we want to trust our doctors to help us get better. But what do you do when you can't find the help you need? This was 2023. After spending a decade as an AI expert, working for companies like Google, Reddit, and Change.org, I had become a startup founder, and the work had started to take a toll on my health. I was experiencing strange symptoms. After some meals, I would get a dry mouth and heart palpitations. I would feel heavy and anxious for hours, unable to focus on work. I went to a few doctors who all reassured me that nothing was wrong with me. Your labs look normal. Just eat healthy, try to avoid stress, and look after yourself. What do you mean, look after yourself? I haven't had sugar in 10 years. I eat a big salad every day. I rarely drink. I go to sleep early, and I work out all the time. They didn't have much to say after that, but I went back home, and I made my diet even stricter. It was all I could do. A few months later, I got worse but my labs were still in the normal ranges. They ran more tests, but nothing looked outrageously high. What needs to happen so I can finally see a specialist? I begged the doctor. So she finally referred me to a specialist who refused to help me because she was too busy with people who have real problems. I felt so frustrated. I just couldn't understand. Why won't they help me? Why can't they do their jobs right? But what if the problem is not that they wouldn't help me, but that they couldn't? When I talk to people, what most believe is that AI will improve medicine by diagnosing better and faster than human doctors and by finding new cures. That's also what most AI experts feel confident about. It's no surprise that AI already can do things like finding cancer in images that the human eye can't. Most people expect technology to do the same things we can do, only faster or more accurately. But few people imagine that very soon, you might wake up, look into your AI-powered mirror, and it will advise you to take it easy for the day because your cortisol levels are too high. Or that you will call your doctor to book an appointment, and within only 25 seconds, an AI will be able to recognize signs of depression long before severe symptoms become obvious. Or that when you scan your face to unlock your phone, an AI will be able to read your heart rate and spot anything out of the ordinary, like the early signs of a heart attack. It sounds like science fiction, but it's actually happening right now. You'd think that if we combine the abilities of doctors and AI, we would get the best of both worlds. But we won't, because perfect diagnosis is not how healthcare will improve. A growing body of research now suggests that AI is outperforming doctors, even when they use it as a tool. A recent trial found that for every 10 patients, radiologists got their diagnosis wrong two or three times. When they used AI, that improved, but only a little. When AI worked independently, however, it was right nine out of 10 times. Another study explains why. The issue was that doctors often undervalue the AI input compared to their own judgment. They tend to stick to their initial impressions, even when the AI was correct, which led them to make less accurate diagnosis. That suspicion is understandable. Most of us tend to think that if a technology isn't perfect, then it's not ready for use yet. For example, we are shocked when driverless vehicles crash but rarely consider that human drivers cause around 1.3 million fatal car accidents every year. So having amazing technology helps, but not if the people supposed to use it don't trust it enough yet. And before we put the blame on doctors, we need to realize what they're dealing with. What I didn't know back then was that because doctors are trained to work with the risks that affect the majority of patients, it's not standard practice to run extra tests that aren't necessary for most. For example, why worry about cardiovascular risks in a four-year-old when that's rarely an issue for another 20 years or more? They also don't have the time to do it. The average doctor sees so many patients a day that in many cases, they only have 15 minutes per session. In some places, it's even less than that. 
they are overworked, stretched thin, and this situation is taking its toll on their health too. Today, 50% of our doctors are experiencing a burnout that has lasted longer than a year. Is it that surprising then that they would ignore mild symptoms and tell someone like me that everything is normal? And even if they trusted a new technology and found the time to use it, who's going to pay for it? Extra tests have costs which are often not covered by insurance. Having an AI examine patients before visits would definitely save doctors time, but unless your doctor's office can charge your insurance plan for those AI services, which they can't right now, the burden will fall on you. That means most of us will not be able to afford the benefits brought by AI to medicine anytime soon. Until we figure out how to get the technology trusted and paid for, doctors will remain overburdened with patients who have acute problems and desperately need their help. Despite the progress of technology, our approach to health will remain more reactive, treating symptoms uh, when they're becoming already serious instead of proactively spotting things long before they become real issues. Does that mean it's all doom and gloom then, or is there something we can do about it? When I wasn't able to find the answers from my doctors, I decided to do something radical. I decided to find answers on my own. Getting a medical degree was out of the question, so instead I used an AI that could read the vast body of medical research available and answer some of my questions directly. So the next time a doctor told me that my labs looked fine when I was feeling low in energy, I pushed back and demanded further testing. When the results came back, it was clear to both of us that I had an iron deficiency. When I thought I was eating healthy, but still had blood sugar issues no doctor had answers for, an AI helped me focus on food that better suited my biology, and the problem improved almost immediately. When I couldn't get an endocrinologist to look deeper into my hormone imbalances, I turned again to AI, which pointed me to a genetic mutation that might have been causing the problem. I was able to get that confirmed and finally got the medication I needed. We are still a long way away from having AI being used wildly in doctors' offices everywhere. But AI will change something fundamental much faster, and that is how we show up to our doctor's appointments. New AI tools can give us an unprecedented understanding of what's happening inside of our bodies. It won't make us doctors or replace our doctors, but it will help us know the right questions to ask. This is the future of patient-empowered precision medicine, and it's coming faster than you think. These days, many of my friends show up to doctor's appointments with tons of research, and doctors are glad to run more tests. But there is something even more transformative about to happen as we take ownership of our health and demand more testing. Recent research found that basic tests available right now can already find important genetic indicators that are able to predict problems multiple decades ahead. In my case, genetic mutations were causing many of the issues I was experiencing. It turns out I had an unrecognized polycystic ovary syndrome, a genetic disorder associated with insulin resistance, cardiovascular risks, and breast cancer, which is the second leading cause of death for women in the US today. Doctor after doctor missed it. AI didn't, and that knowledge might have saved my life. Now, I don't expect everyone to take it upon themselves to spend hours speaking to an AI like I did. Even some of my friends think that's a little too much. But here's what you can do. Go to your doctor and ask them to run more comprehensive blood work tests and do that at least twice a year. Question them about the results. Try to understand more. And just in case, check what an AI has to say about those results. Even in the cheapest and most frequently used tests, there are important signals about serious health risks like heart attack or cancer that an AI can find. But that only works if you're tested regularly. We think perfect diagnosis is what AI will deliver. But in reality, we cannot imagine the full extent of discoveries it will make as it becomes more intelligent. 
Before this technology changes the health systems we depend on, it will change us. It will empower us to speak up for ourselves and become our own strongest advocates. We don't need to wait for doctors to buy into AI or for insurance providers to pay for it. We can take the first steps now. Learn more, ask better questions, demand more. That is how this revolution starts. And it has to start because the future of our health and our lives depend on it.